Hey everybody, welcome back to Victory and Glory Napoleon! Uh, last time we won a battle against the Austrians, and we're trying to move towards Vienna to try and take their capital and knock them out of the war, at least temporarily, because that's how it works in this game. You knock them out of the war, and then they become a neutral country, and then Great Britain tries to spend its political points to woo them back towards war. We have no political points we can apply to anybody right now. Right now, Spain is friendly to us, Russia and Austria and Great Britain are at war with us, the Ottomans are neutral, as are Prussia, Italy and Germany, they can't really declare war on us, because they are more regions that speak a common language but aren't a real country yet. But we can take some of those, whatever, not in this turn though. So we get to choose a card. We can choose to recruit minor nation troops in Italy, recruit two units from any of those available in any Italian region that is a member of the French Empire, or we can get Berthier, Talented Chief of Staff. The army led by Napoleon may contain up to 25 units? We're going to get that one. So the Brits are going to use Diplomatic Overture. What's basically happening is when I was showing you the numbers before of what the other countries think of us, if, they get, if pressure gets down to 2, 1, or 0, the Brits are going to do what they're doing right now, playing Diplomatic Overture. May be used with a major nation that is not at war with France and has a diplomatic rating of two or lower. If successful, that major nation will declare war on France. The chance of success is tied to the diplomatic rating. 5%. If they're two diplomacy, 15% uh, at one, 25% if they're zero diplomacy. So the British were trying to get the uh, Prussians to join the war against us, saying, oh, more than I want. And the Prussians are like, hell no, mama, I ain't doing that. Cause they're nice guys. I don't know if you saw it, but if you remember earlier, there was a big army here in Milan that was chasing our southern army. It has now retreated into Tyrol. Now, do we have to play that Napoleon card? Does that happen automatically? The army led by Napoleon, can I just play that now? I think I did. I, uh, the best way to find out is, let's put some more troops in, because normally your army limit for troops in an army is 20, as you can see there. 25 would be awesome. So what do we have? We have four artillery. What can we shake off of here? This is Napoleon's army, this is a supporting army. Why don't we shake off? Uh, artillery, a leader. Leaders won't count against that. We will do a cavalry and a couple infantry. These light blue here mean that they are French allies. Maybe we got them from chunks of Germany. They're like local troops that raised up to join us because they believe in the revolution. So that should be our five guys and our one leader. So if I'm correct about this, my calculations are correct. Whoa. Did I have the wrong one join up? <laughs> I bet I did. Yeah, I did. That is so me. Alright, so we're going to have Napoleon's guys move into Vienna proper. We're going to have to hold it for a turn. They're going to attack us. So we're going to move these reinforcing guys. Actually, we'll move these guys up here, I guess. Because we have a card... Where is it? Confederation of the Rhine. All of Germany must be occupied by French troops are already part of the Empire. Meaning, if we could put guys up in these areas, we could get some extra troops. While we're at it... Oh, I'm going to move these guys into Switzerland. Well, that's a bad idea because these guys are there. So we'll move you there. Move these guys into Lorraine. Newman. And then another important part of the game, which I haven't really talked much about yet, is fleets. You can see right here there are four Brit ships. And what they are doing is they are trying to blockade our ports to keep our ships in port. Which is actually really smart of them. You can see like there's seven... British ships here, and we've got five. 
They've got us outnumbered everywhere, or even numbered, but they have better ships, so it's like being outnumbered. I think that's going to be the end of our turn, though. And they're going to attack Vienna. The Austrians want their areas back. Oh, you can see, once again, the Brits are trying to use a diplomatic overture to get Prussia to join their war, to get them to declare war on us. Prussia said, no, uh France is my friend. Or at least someone I can be an acquaintance with. So the enemy approaches. A hostile m m his army has moved into the region of Hanover. What? Oh, way up there. This is really where the game needs to give you an option to move the map around so you can see it. So you can see 12 Brit troops moved in there. We have one infantry there. We're going to try and retreat because there's no way our, our guy can win that. He failed and he was run over by the British army coming in from the north. Uh, liberate minor nation. Hanover, you, where you saw the Brits up there, they are going to liberate that region. This card may be played when a minor nation that is part of the French Empire is occupied by British slash allied troops. Playing this card removes that nation from the French Empire. Oh wait, never mind, I'm sorry, the Austrians did. Uh, fleet is refitted and ready. Austria is defeated because we have their capital. You've humbled the mighty Austrian Empire. Your troops have occupied Vienna. Central Europe is yours to... or now obeys your commands. Diplomacy has reduced Austria to the status of a friendly neutral power. The state will last for one calendar year. So we're going to get political power for that. And we're going to get some cards. Now we can recruit uh, minor troops in Italy. A new general emerges. A new French leader becomes available. I want to think about this turn very carefully, because what's going to happen is... Well, let me explain something first. So, when they say minor nation, you see these kind of brown territories? I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> these brown territories, these are all minor nations. And you can see they're a little bit different colored, because you can occupy them and take control of them. Whereas this here, this darker blue, that is our home territory uh, for the... English, this here is their home territory. For the Russians, this is their home territory. For the Austrians, you can see the line around them because they're neutral now. That's why they're not solid gray. This is all neutral, not neutral, natural Austrian territory. This little area here with the circle, this is a minor territory. Once again, I'm hitting the wrong thing. A minor territory that Austria has. You can tell Austria controls it because that's the emblem in their capital. That shows that they are controlling it right now. You can see the Ottoman Empire over here. They have lots of neutral territory that they've taken over. So what are we going to do? There's a 12-man British army here. They're going to move into Holland, which is going to force our Navy unit out of here, probably to get crushed by the British army. I don't like that. Do we have any, like, forced march cards? We have strategic movement. The active army may move three regions, provided that none of the regions moved into our enemy... Owned or enemy occupied. We're going to use that. We're going to use that on Napoleon's army here. And we might not stop them from throwing us out of Holland, but we want to prevent them from coming down here and chasing all of our fleets. While we're at it... What do we got? We've got three activations left. Three more guys we can move. We're going to split this army up. And I believe... Well, I don't know if Baden Wirt counts. Baden Wirt probably counts. Can we use the Confederation of the Rhine one? Uh, we need to f put some troops into Baden Wurttemberg. So we have some troops here we can move. Confederation of the Rhine created. All of Germany must be occupied by French troops. Or already be part of the Empire. We'll gain four German troops. Wait, what am I missing? Mecklenburg? Oh, poop. That's a pain in the ass. Mecklenburg is way up there. So that was totally not worth it. What do we else do we have? 
uh, minor troops in Italy. We could create the Kingdom of Northern Italy if we can occupy Piedmont, Milan, Venice, and the Papal States. So we'd have to... We already have Piedmont. We'd have to occupy all of these. Well, we can move you into the Papal States. We can move you into Milan. Wrong button. Oh, I'm out of movements. You know, then we're going to undo that. We'll move you into Milan. The next turn, we can move them into Venice. Move these guys into the Papal States, if I remember... And try and form a nation up there. A kind of puppet government. It's like Kermit's in charge. Alright, so we're going to choose another card. We can recruit minor nation troops in an occupied province of a major nation. We don't have any of those. We've not occupied any homeland territory of Austria or Prussia. Or we can get skirmishers. These are really good units. They're really actually... Not so much units as they're a perk that your unit gets. You may add skirmishers to two of your regular infantry units. Imperial Guard units may not be upgraded with skirmishers. We're going to pick that. Uh, once again, the Brits are going to try and get Prussia to join them. Prussia said no, which is smart because we got a giant army right outside of Berlin. And you see they're reinforcing the English Channel Fleet. They're reinforcing the fleet over there by Brittany. And by moving Napoleon's army up, the British are trying to retreat through Denmark. So currently we are fighting the Russians and the British. Let's go to the diplomacy screen. We've got four political points, but it's hard for us to get new ones. We're going to spend two on Prussia to try and make it harder for the Brits to get them into the war. The British are going to try and convince them anyway. You know, while we're at it... Oh, wait. Winter attrition. I forgot about that. It is January, February. Armies which move during January slash February run the risk of losing units to winter attrition. So we're not going to move because we don't want to use, use, lose any troops. It is not worth it for us to lose any. We are going to use this. Consolidate the empire. Napoleon's genius allows him to modernize and organize the French empire when he isn't constantly at war. Playing this card uses all your activations in one turn and gives you four victory points. Those are important at the end, victory points. So activations is how many like units we can move. We're not going to move any because it's winter. We don't want attrition. We will use that. And then that's going to be the end of our turn. Uh, the Brits used more political points to get Prussia back to zero. And now they played once again diplomatic overture to try and get them to join the alliance. Prussia once again is like, no! I see the giant Napoleon army right out there. Now Ed Card played recruitment in Britain. They're like, what up, mate? Join the army. <laughs> pip Pip. Mary Poppins allows the British AI to recruit one or two random British units in the Great Britain and place them in London. I uh, see they got an artillery unit and an infantry unit, apparently. The big problem for us is the British Navy is so powerful that we'd really have to work hard to overpower them and then try and get our way across. So we're going to... What are we going to pick up? We can pick up four new units. Let's pick up uh, artillery. We're doing really good on the mainland. We're going to take a risk and pick up some boats. You know what? We're going to go all in. We're going to take four ships. Normally I wouldn't do that, but we're going to try... Unfortunately, they're all split up. I don't like that. We need more in certain areas. Uh, the Russians are getting some more troops. I don't think we've fought any Russian troops yet. For us to get the Russians out of the war, they have two capitals we have to take simultaneously. You, you have to take Moscow here and St. Pete. So it's a pain in the butt because you got to take two capitals and you have to deal with the fact that they have attrition in the winter just for sitting there, not even moving. And you can have attrition with uh, foraging and stuff. Not foraging documents. Why don't we split this army? Oh no. It's not what I meant to do. Disaster! Disaster! 
Well, then hopefully next time we can get into Mecklenburg and use that card that would help us out. We're also going to... Oh, we have one more movement we can do. We will have one of our allied troops stay right here. We'll move these guys into Venice. These double laurel wreaths, too. That shows right now that Austria is not just friendly to us, they're fr or neutral to us, they're friendly neutral, meaning we can move through their territory. The reason they're that way is because there's a high diplomatic rating and we beat them in a war. Well, while we're at it, we're going to use two political points to try and get Prussia to like us more. Great Britain only has one left. I think they get one in the next turn, though. And we will merge these fleets while we're at it. I want to move them out here, but you can see they got six British fleets. And we can only move one of these out at a time. Alright, we get one of two new cards. Uh, recruit minor nation troops in Poland. The Grand Duchy of Warsaw. We're not going to do that. That's way here be behind enemy lines or neutral lines. Or we can implement the Cold Napoleon. The code forbade privileges based on birth. In fact, the Cold Napoleon revolutionized Europe in real life, allowed freedom of religion, and specified that government jobs should go to the most qualified. A meritocracy! When played, the following changes are made on the diplomatic track. Spain goes negative four, Germany goes plus four. Uh, once again, the Brits are going to try and get Prussia to join them. Prussia's accepted an offer of alliance with Great Britain is now at war with France! You bastards! Come on, why'd you... Come on, Prussia. See what happened? Great Britain's like, join us in the war. Prussia's like, okay. And the Brits are like, yeah, we're leaving now. Damn it. Now they're going to attack Saxony. We're going to try and retreat. Our army failed to retreat and was overrun. The all right thing, though, is Napoleon's got his army in Hanover right next to Berlin. We should be able to move right into there. Easy peasy. Poor, poor Prussians. Or more like dumb Prussians. Great Britain's like, can you help us in this war with Napoleon? We'll help you. Prussians are like, yeah, we're buddies. And then they left. Spain's resumed its place among the powers of Europe. Her armed forces are once again sovereign and able to defend their nationality. They're currently neutral. So that means because we had ships hiding in a Spanish port that they had to return to a French port. They kind of get a free trip that way. We have five activations. We're going to move an army into here. Let us use our create the kingdom of Mario land. It's -a me. The kingdom of northern Italy. French troops must occupy those areas. And then we're going to get free troops for that. We can pick what region we want them in. As long as they're one of those Spanish regions. You can see we got these four guys. And we kind of have an army forming down here. So basically our guys going in and be like, Hey, don't you guys hate dukes and kings and crap? And they're like, yeah, we do. I'm not joining the Republic. And now stupid, stupid Prussia. Napoleon is going to attack Berlin. Now this, this battle might look different than the other ones you've seen. The reason is this is a minor battle. Uh, you have a minor battle if there are not eight guys on both sides. They only have five guys, so instead of the big section in between left, center, and right, there's only one section, and everybody's right next to each other. So we're going to put in combined arms, because that gives us a bonus. I'm going to put them... I'm going to be anal like that. Combined arms, once again, is infantry, artillery, and cavalry. We're also going to talk about another part of the game that we've not really dealt with up to now. What unit are you? You are Light Cavalry? He's German. The Light Blue ally is German there. We're going to put in our French Heavy Cavalry there. And then we're all... Wait, actually, we can put in more than that. Because we have Napoleon here. I think we can put up to nine guys, possibly, up there. The better your commander is, the more people you can put out. So obviously we have a clear advantage here. So what we're going to do is a thing called squaring the 
Other dudes? That's the technical term. So if we take our cavalry here and we hold it over an infantry unit, cavalry versus unsquared, it gets a bunch of pluses. This is Napoleonic times, you know, it's smoothbore muskets. How did they defend against cavalry attacks? They formed squares. I don't mean they got really nerdy and put on glasses. Eh, hey, would you like to go to the drive-in movie? Why won't girls touch me? So we attack them. If they don't square, there's like a 35% chance they square. If they don't square, we get a huge advantage because we catch them unsquared. We can just, you know, quickly flank them and hit them. If they do square, our unit will probably become disorganized, but the other unit, the Prussian infantry unit, will be stuck in a square. So our cavalry is now disorganized, but they are squared, hence the little square around the number. And the reason that's important is, let's take our infantry. Let's say he's going to shoot at, this is the exact same kind of unit unsquared. We have a good advantage, right? Because we have better commanders, our commanders are supporting. But what if he shoots at a squared unit? Look at the big difference. That's a plus three, good attack. Shooting against the squared is a crushing plus nine. The reason is, when you're squared, you're in a much smaller area. So if we shoot a cannonball into there, or we shoot with our infantry, we're more likely to hit. So that's one of the strategies of the game, is if you can, use your cavalry to force the enemy infantry to square. If they don't square, you run them down with your cavalry. If they do square, then you try and shoot them with your cannon and your infantry. And we failed. What about with our cannon? There we go, and we killed those guys. I should have shown you the percentage of that. We'll do that again. We'll try and square these guys. You can see that they squared. Once again, there's a square. Technically, it's a rectangle around the one if you want to be anal about it. I love anal. Ew. So if we take our heavy artillery here, we're going to use that because it's the best one. Hold it over an unscored guy. Excellent attack, plus four. What about against this guy? Crushing attack, plus ten. Shooting cannonballs into all those squared dudes. Uh, they are disorganized. Their cavalry attacked our cavalry. What if we have our artillery shoot into these guys? Another Christian attack. That will probably push them back. You kill them. Excellent. So let's use our German light infantry or light cavalry. I'm on a horse. Whatever. To try and square these guys. And then we're going to just shoot at them with our infantry. These are just regular old run-of-the-mill line infantry. Don't we have a skirmish card we can use somewhere that I forgot to use too? So, so far this has gone really, really well. They have two units left. We gotta get ready for the next round. I believe, like all the other battles, they have to fight for at least two rounds. Some of our units are recovering right now. They're getting reorganized. The D is going away. My balls! So why don't we have our heavy cavalry Attack their infantry. Force them into square. Our guys are disorganized because as they form the square, they messed their guys up a bit. But that's alright. We should have a crushing attack from artill artillery onto their squared infantry. Murdered them. Most awesome. And then let's just shoot our cannons at their cavalry. Well, that's an overwhelming win. We are most certainly going to pursue... The only, well, we can technically kill the leader for Lucky. So they have no one to screen or protect because their only cavalry unit that's left got routed. So our four guys are going to initiate pursuit. And they all hit. So their cavalry unit is going to be gone. This is going to be a total wipe. Technically, I think their leader might be able to survive, but we killed all their units. One of our guys got promoted to level three. Well done. And we killed six of their units, so I think we get a bonus card for that. What? What? That's what you say after you win a victory. Oh, I guess we don't get a bonus card because five of those were infantry. So we'll see what the Prussians do next turn, if they attack us or not. Well, we're at it down here. Can you move yet? All right, we're going to merge these dudes, because sooner or later, sooner or later, Austria, so they have a diplomatic rating of three, sooner or later, Great Britain's going to go offer them some blowjobs to get back into the alliance. That's a pretty good turn, all in all, if you ask me. Do we want to use any of these? We could have Minor Nation join the Empire. 
That's not bad. Code Napoleon. That's going to make Spain mad at us. We don't want that. We will use... Oh, where is it? Recruit... Wait, if we own Bavarian Tyrol and Austria is at peace with us, we can create the Kingdom of Bavaria. No, we don't have Tyrol. We can move into Tyrol. If I undo that movement. Oh, no, I can't. Maybe we'll do that next episode if I think about it. We'll move into Tyrol, and then we'll try and claim all this. How, how much longer are we going to be at peace with Austria? Three turns, so we could hypothetically annex some of their territory that way. And then while we're at it, why don't we take Westphalia? Minor nation joins Empire, choose a minor nation, which currently has French troops in it, and it will become your bitch. Westphalia is ours. I like that. And that's going to be the end of this episode. Not bad. Unless you're Prussian. <laughs> because you listen to the stupid English. Why did they do that? The English are like, we'll bail you out. And then they just left. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you're having fun. I love this game.